So for our first project, it's going to be very simple. We're going to take a cut out a glass of wine and it's going to be a white wine and we're going to place it onto a background and adjust some of the blending mode settings so that it looks like it belongs in that environment. We're also going to play around with color settings to see if we can't change a white wine into a red wine. And I got this inspiration for this project from a real uh, project that I did with a client a couple years ago when I worked with the wine industry. This was very common. We couldn't quite find the perfect photo we always had to kind of bring in a glass of wine sitting on a barrel and sometimes they wanted to change the color or tweak it. So this is kind of inspired from a real client project I did not long ago. So this is the first photo we're going to work with. You can go ahead and find and download this in the resource guide that I have in the class. You can find all the images there. We need to isolate this wine glass and there's several different ways to cut out and isolate objects. Uh, there's one really neat, very easy option I always try first and it's available in the newer versions of Photoshop. You go to select and you go down to subject and there's going to be a little bit of an algorithm that's going to run that's going to try to find what the subject matter of the photo is. It's not always perfect, but it does a pretty good job. So you can see how it isolated the two subject matters. It doesn't isolate them perfectly. As you can see, it doesn't quite select those items. So we're going to have to manually go in and kind of clean up the selection. Of course, you can also use several other ways to cut things out, but I've kind of found shortcuts and using a combination of um, different ways to cut it out has always uh, been easy for me. So I just went up to select and you go down to subject and it gives you a head start. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my lasso tool. I'm going to do the magnetic lasso tool. I find that works a little bit easier. And I'm going to, uh, as uh, I'm going to, just a little bit of basics. So if you know this, you can go ahead and kind of glaze over a little bit, but this is adding to your selection up top. And this over here is subtracting from your selection. So I'm going to need to subtract that selection. So I have, see the little subtraction sign. So I'm going to go ahead and just subtract this whole element. We don't need that anymore. We just need the, the wine glass. And so you notice how that subtracted the selection. And now I'm going to go ahead and clean up this selection. So we're going to see how good the magnetic tool does. So now I need to add to my selection. So I'm going to switch up to add and you can also hold down the shift button and kind of go back and forth between addition and subtraction. So I'm going to go ahead and add to my selection. So hold down shift. Go ahead and bring that in. Just bring it in as much as I can using these tools and then I can just go back and hand select the rest. Okay, so now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to switch over to the polygon so it's no longer going to have that magnetic quality. It's going to be a little bit more manual. Switching to subtraction, I'm just going to subtract the selection, get a nice smooth cutout. I can go back down here and add a cutout. You can also use the pen tool to find to get better manual curves cut out. We'll do that a little bit later in another project. So many ways to skin a cat when it comes to cutting out objects. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in and just fine tune a few of these selections. I'm not gonna bore you by cutting them all out manually and let me just do one more. Let's do a subtraction and subtract this little bit. And then I'm going to show you a way to kind of smooth out your selection even further. So I was able to smooth out my selection by using the polygon lasso and the magnetic lasso tool. So I got what I think is a, is a pretty general cutout. Uh, but let's say I want to smooth my cutout. Maybe it's not perfect. Uh, there's a way to go to select and mask right up here. I'm going to go ahead and click on select and mask. And this can kind of help you smooth out your cut out a little bit more. So I'm going to go down to smooth and just increase the smoothness. And what it's going to do is any sharp edges, it's going to kind of round out some of those uh, sharp edges. And, and pixelation, so just adding a little bit of smooth helps. Feather is great in some cases, although you can see the feather cut out and it looks obvious, so you gotta be very careful with feather, not to do too much feather. I just do just a little bit to kind of soften the cutout, uh, but don't, don't be too dramatic with your feathering. And you can shift the edge, you can actually have a negative shift of your selection, so if you have any white selections that are still included in your cutout, if you do a negative uh, kind of shifting, it'll bring that selection down inward and away from maybe that white background you're trying to uh, select. But I think I'm pretty good, so I'm just going to do a zero for shift edge. I'm going to click on OK and it's going to kind of soften that cutout for me. So now I'm ready to cut and paste, so I'm just going to hold down Command and C and going to cut that out, or Command and X, sorry. 
going to cut that out and I'm going to be able to paste it on my new background. So I have my new background that I can place my wine glass on. I'm just going to do Command V and it's going to paste it in there. Or I can just go to edit and copy and paste that way. And here's our new wine glass. And so one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and back. I'm going to decrease the size of my image. Right now it's 6,000 pixels. That's huge. That's going to take up a lot of space in Photoshop, a lot of memory. So if you have an older computer, it might be good to kind of size it down just a little bit, but still retain a really nice resolution. So I'm just going to cut it in half. So you guys may need to do that if your computer is not brand new or has more than 8 gigabytes of RAM. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Let's do a 50% and see how that looks. Okay, and now we can paste our image in. And let's kind of get the right size. I'm just holding down um, a newer versions of Photoshop 2019 and higher. You don't have to hold down the shift button. It'll automatically uh, scale down nicely. Uh, but in older versions of Photoshop, you have to hold down shift before you drag to get that nice dimensional scaling going on. So now I'm going to find the right placement for our wine glass. We just want to show the top. So let's show it right here. I'm going to go ahead and click and enter. And now we have our layer. So here's the issue and here's what we're going to resolve. This doesn't look like it belongs at all. The lighting is different and uh, this has kind of got the white background behind it and it needs to have some transparency. So what we're going to do next is cut out, cut out this white portion onto a separate layer and add a blending mode so that certain pixels are let through in a certain transparency way so it looks like it belongs in the environment. So now I'm going to get another selection option just to kind of show you a wide variety of selecting specific objects and cutting them out. Uh, we're going to go up to this quick selection tool. I'm going to go ahead and highlight our layer here. And what this does is I can click and hold and it's going to continue to, to grab areas. So if I wanted to grab this bottom area, I just click and hold and it automatically selects it. Just like the polygon lasso tool, you could subtract selections and you can add to your selection. So I'm going to go ahead and click off and show you one more time. So it's called the quick selection tool. I have the addition on and I'm just going to click and hold and just like that it automatically selected this little area and you can click and hold it and select further certain areas. So great. So I'm going to copy. Actually I'm going to cut. So I'm going to go up to edit or you can do your little keyboard shortcuts. Um, do cut and then I'm going to do command V to paste it right back in. But see notice how it pasted kind of awkward. It's kind of shift it off a little bit. To be able to paste it right back where I cut it out, there's a special option. You can go down to Edit, Paste Special, and Paste in Place. And that will paste it in the exact location that you cut it. And I'm not sure why it doesn't do that automatically, but maybe they'll add that in the future. So now what we have is a divided wine glass. So we're going to mess around with the blending modes. The blending modes are going to be right here in our Layers panel. Right here, it's, uh, most of them default as normal. And we're going to play around with blending modes. And blending modes are going to allow pixels from the background and the layers below to show through. And there's several different blending modes that let specific amount of pixels through depending on which one you select. Um, so I'm just going to kind of preview through ones that I think would have the most realistic effect. And I'm just kind of scrolling down. I think I already found one I think that I'm pretty happy with. It's going to be up top. Multiply looks really nice because it's kind of letting some of those dark pixels through so it doesn't look washed out. So, so far Multiply looks to be, a linear burn is pretty good. I think in my sample I did before uh, when I was practicing, I, I believe I used Soft Light, which doesn't really show some of those highlights as well. So I think I'm going to go with a different one and do Multiply. So now I have the Multiply layer effect on. And now you can see how it kind of shines through some of the background, so it looks like the glass is actually there. But it's a little too dark, so we just need to go up and do a, a few little modifications um, to make sure the lighting is correct. 